Hey boys and girls, this is Mr. Bell, Mr. Bell's Math. Today we're going to talk about independent and dependent variables. Okay, and we're going to be able to recognize them in tables and in graphs. Okay, uh, first thing you need to know, uh, our essential question or what I want you to know by the end of this video is how can you identify independent and dependent quantities from tables and graphs? Okay, and that's what we're going to look at primarily. Let me read it one more time just to make sure we understood. Essential question, how can you identify independent and dependent quantities from tables and graphs? All right. Many real-world situations involve two variable quantities. All right. Variable means they change, in which one quantity depends on the other. The quantity that depends on the other quantity is called the dependent variable. So the dependent variable depends on another quantity. And the quantity it depends on is called the independent variable. Okay, so there's two types. There's an independent and a dependent. The independent has a dependent variable, and the dependent variable depends on what happens to the independent variable. I know it sounds confusing, but it really doesn't. It's not confusing at all. Okay, so let's look at an example here. It says, I got a freight train that moves at a constant speed. The distance y in miles that the train traveled after X hours is shown on the table. Okay, so here we got a table. I got time representing by A, X, and it's in hours. So at zero hours, one hours, two hours, and three hours. And then I have distance represented by Y in miles. Okay, so the first increment is zero, then it goes to 50, then it goes to 100, then it goes to 150. So there's a relationship here between these numbers. Okay, but one of these numbers depends on the other one. Okay, so first of all, going back to what we what we learned um, in the last section, we have our x value and we have our y value. Okay, let's see. Let me get out of my this white color here. Should have turned this back on. All right, so my x value, if you not if you don't re remember, is right here on this part of the graph. Then I have my y value, which is this vertical axis. Okay, so if I were to plot these points, I would say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Wait, no, I wouldn't do that. Yeah, because that's, that's time. I can do that. So I go up to 6. Then in um, my distance, I would go ahead and say 50, 100, 150, 200. All right, you could write this out 50, 100, 150. 200, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And right there for both of them would be 0. Okay, so the reason why distance is a dependent variable in this case is because no matter what happens to the time, it's going to affect the distance. So if at 0, okay, if it's 0, opacity I want the size I guess I can't adjust the size can I no all right so at zero uh, that means no distance has gone on okay zero hours nothing the train hasn't gone anywhere when you go to one then you come up here to 50 after two hours you come up to 100 after three hours you come up to 150 after four hours you come up to 200 okay and so forth and you can connect these lines and it makes it makes a straight line alright so the what I'm trying to get at here is that the relationship the for the distance to increase some time has to elapse so the distance solely depends on how much time has elapsed so the question is you know at zero hours the train hasn't gone anywhere but at one hour the train's gone 50 miles at two hours, the train's gone 100, and at three, mi three hours, the train's gone 150 miles. So what's the unit rate? How, how fast is this train going? Well, it kind of tells us right here. It says that the train goes 50 miles in one hour. Okay, and you can, you can designate that with an with a HR. So that's the unit rate of the train. I know my distance depends on my time, so my independent variable, you can say independent, is going to equal my x value, which is going to be time. All right. My dependent variable is y, and you can say that's distance. 
okay? So that's it. That's all there is to figuring out what's going on here. All right, let's look at another thing, another situation that you may have. Here it says that an art teacher, um, an art teacher has 20 pounds of clay but wants to buy more clay for her class. The amount of clay that represented by X purchased by the teacher and the amount of clay Y that's actually available for the class are shown in the graph. So you got this graph right here. It says clay used in art class. Clay bought by the teacher in pounds. All right, zero through looks like 100. And then we have this one, clay, available for the class. Okay, and this one starts at zero and goes up to 100 also. Now, here's, here's the kind of tricky part, is that, well, it's, it doesn't start at zero, zero, like the last graph did. This one starts at zero, 20. Why is that? Well, that's because she's, she already has 20 pounds of clay. All right, so that's factored in on the graph. At, at, she hasn't bought anything yet, so if, when she's buying zero clay, she, she currently has 20, so it starts at 20 on the graph. So it says, if the teacher buys 10 more pounds of clay, how many pounds will be available to the art class? So you can just say that, all right, if she buys 10 pounds, which is right here, it goes up to the graph right there, and that tells me that I have 30 pounds of clay available for the class. It says, if the art class has a total of 50 pounds of clay available, how much clay did the teacher buy? Well, 50 runs about right there. You go over to the graph, it hits that point, and you go down, and it looks like she bought how much? Well, 30 pounds. Okay, she had 20 to begin with, and she has 50 now for the class. That means she bought 30 pounds. Okay, and that is a 30 LBS per pounds, not a, not a three abs. Okay, so we found out that the independent variable is how much she bought okay that doesn't depend on anything in this graph what is dependent is the amount that's available to the class okay because she has at least 20 pounds available but if she buys any amount it's going to change the amount that's available so that that depends on how much she buys so that's our dependent variable all right, so let's look at a couple examples. It says here we want to talk about describing relationships between independent and dependent variables. So we have um, our independent variable here and our dependent variable here. Now, just, just typically speaking, all right, your x is always going to be your independent variable. Independent, okay? Your y is always going to be your dependent variable. Okay, your y value is always, always, always going to depend on your x value. Okay, so when you graph it, and you need to know this, this is your x value, this is your y value. Your x value, this value here, is independent. But this value always depends on what happens to x. So that's what we need to figure out here in this table. Okay, sometimes I see y'all say, oh, well, there's just an increase of 1 each time. Well, this isn't an increase, well, this actually is an increase of 1, but it's not always going to be that way. But how you make these relationships <coughs> is you compare the x and the y together. You say, okay, I got my x value here. Something happens to x to become y. And you have to figure out what that relationship is. So that's what we're going to do in this case right here. We're going to try to figure out what the relationship is. So we say, all right, if x is 0, what happened to 0 to get to 10? Well, it increased. So the increase tells me that it's either going to be addition or it's going to be multiplication. All right. If I know my, um, uh, not my independent, but my identity property of zero, I know if I multiply any number times zero, I'm not going to get a number other than zero. So it can't be multiplication in this case. Okay. It has to be addition. So I know that this is my X value. If I say X plus what happens? So if this is X, it's zero and it moves up to 10. Well, let's just say 10. If X plus 10 should give me Y, it should happen for every scenario that we put here. So if I plug in 1 for x, I get 1 plus 10 equals 11, and that's what I have right here. If I plug in 2 for x, 2 plus 10 equals 12. That's what I have here. If I plug in 3 for x, 3 plus 10 equals 13. That's what I have. So y, y, I don't know why my pen's not working too good, equals x plus 
10, and that is the relationship in this particular table. All right, let's look at this table. Same thing. My x values are in the top. My y values are on the bottom. My x value is independent. My y value is dependent. Okay, so something happens to x to give me y each time. Okay, so if I look at my x and y values again, I go from 0 to 15. So that means it's increasing. It's more likely going to be addition or it's going to be multiplication. So once again, I'm starting with a 0. So if I know my identity property of multiplication, I know if I multiply any number times 0, I'm going to get 0. So it can't be multiplied. It has to be addition. Okay, so I'm adding something to 0 to get to 15. Well, guess what? It's probably going to be 15. Okay, x plus 15 will give me my y value. So if 0 plus 15, okay, if x is 0, y is going to be 15. If x is 1, y is going to be 16, and so on. Okay, so we can pick any number for x. It could be 100, and you should be able to use this relationship right here to come up with its y value. If x is 100, what's y? Okay, y is going to be 15, of course. So that's definitely something you want to consider. Um, in this case, we have another table. I have my x value is 0, my y value is 0. So now I'm thinking I'm going to be doing multiplication. All right, so I'm going to look at this one and say, all right, if x is 1, what happens here? Well, it looks like I can either add 16 or multiply by 16. Well, if I add 16 to this, I won't get 0, I'll get 16. So it's got to be multiplied by 16. Let's try this one to see if it's if it does work. 2 times 16 is 32. 3 times 16 is 48. 4 times 16 is 4, 64. So that's my relationship. Okay, so I can say x, but I don't want to just say x times 16. I want to say 16x. That's how we're learning how to do this. All right, not, not there. But y equals 16 times whatever the value of x is. It doesn't matter what number we pick for x. I can multiply it by 16 and get my y value, and they're all going to fall. All these points are going to fall on the number line. And if you don't remember talking about points, that these are your x and y coordinates. 0, 0. That's your first one. All right, next one is 1, 16. Next one is 2, 32. All right, and so on. x is my independent. y is my dependent. Whatever happens to y is a direct result of something happening to x. All right, that's why it's it's dependent. All right, last one, we're going to look at a graph, and then we're going to um, be finished. So first thing, if I'm looking at a graph, I may want to put these values in a table. All right, so I got X, and I got Y. I don't know if I have enough money. So if I just look and I say, okay, I go over to my X is 1. All right, what happens to that? It looks like this scale goes up by 3s, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. So if x is 1, y is 3. If x is 2, y is 6. If x is 3, y is 9. If x is 4, y is 12. Okay, and it just keeps going. So I need to figure out what the relationship is. I know x is my independent variable and y is my dependent variable. y depends on what happened to x. So it increases. It goes from 1 to 3. It goes from 2 to 6. It goes from 3 to 9. So it's increasing. It's either going to be addition or it's going to be multiplication. So let's try addition first. What can I add to 1 to get to 3? Well, I can add 2. If I add 2 to 2, will I get 6? No, I get 4. So it's not addition. It's got to be multiplication. So 1 times 3 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 3 is 12. So the relationship here is y equals 3 times whatever the value of x is. And that's your equation. X is still your independent variable. Y is still your um, dependent variable. All right, none of that changes. This is all you have to do to figure out some of this stuff.